You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on L.A. Talk Radio. Welcome to Question Reality. I'm your host, Priscilla Leona. We're coming to you live from Studio City, California. And you can catch our show every Sunday from 5 p.m. to 5.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, our show is about informative entertainment. And it's done in a fun, upbeat, improv style. We will provide you with tips and advice and resource information on how to pursue a career in show business. Now, we have guests that work in various professions in the entertainment industry, and what that means is that we are going to have a guest from a career that you are interested, so you have to keep tuned in, or you have to check out our website to find out who is going to be here in the future, and you can visit our official website, which is the Question Reality website. The address is questionreality.us, questionreality.us, not .com. Uh, if you want to check out any of our past guest bios, read a brief bio and listen directly to the show uh, by hitting the play button or download any of the shows, what you do is right now you're listening to us on the home page. So, You want to look up at the top, and it'll say Schedule 1, Schedule 1 link at the top of the LA Talk Radio website. You click that, look for our show, Question Reality, in the time slot of Sunday at 5, and then you click the link. And that'll take you directly to the archive page where you can peruse at your own leisure and check out our shows. We have their titles, a little brief bio, and then we have their website. And on the right, you can hit Play and Download. And uh, there you go. You can also download us from the podcast section of iTunes. Now, we'd love for you to call in and ask questions or provide comments on any guests that we have on the show. But we ask that you call in between 520. (coughs) Excuse me. (laughs) I have a little cold and I'm just staving it off here. 520 and 530 p.m. When you call in, we take your calls directly. You don't have to go through a screening process, which really helps. Now, the call in number is right in front of you on underneath where it says channel one and you might want to jot it down uh by the way i want all of you to get a pen and paper if you are in the entertainment business get a pen and paper because i have some really fantastic events that are coming up and i'm going to tell you about today you don't want to miss these events uh The number to call in is area code 323-203-0815. Again, 323-203-0815. Now, we have a fantastic guest for you today. Her name is Sylvia Allen. And Sylvia Allen is the president and founder of Sylvia's Children and also Allen Consulting. Now, get the pen and paper. You want to write it down or you can go directly, open up another web browser and check out her website, sylviaschildren.org, sylviaschildren.org or allen, A-L-L-E-N, consulting.com. And you can look around while I'm going through the advertisements if you don't want to listen to them, but they're fantastic. I do them verbally, so that's even more fun. Um But yeah, get a pen and paper right now, and here we go. Now, first of all, I'm going to start out with, if you are available and interested in hearing some great jazz and soul music tonight, if you are in the Long Beach area, tonight you can go see... um, My husband playing soul and jazz. And we'd love for you to come out and show your support. He'll be performing with this Sir Winston Jazz uh, Soul Quintet. And it's at, (coughs) excuse me, the Bull Bar. The Bull Bar, 3316 East 7th Street, 3316 East 7th Street in Long Beach. And if you want to check out their website, it's bullbarlongbeach.com, B-U-L-L-B-A-R-L-O-N-G-B-E-A-C-H.com. Again, no cover charge, free. The drinks are very inexpensive. They got some great bar food, so you want to check it out. Now... 
Mm-hmm. We are going into these wonderful entertainment events. We have, let's see, Saturday, May 1st. It's coming up next week. We have the Filmmaker 2.0 Seminar on May 1st. And basically, you if you want to reinvent yourself as a 21, uh, 21, a 21st century filmmaker, uh, if you want to make your money back before you make your movie, you want to optimize your website to make sales, you want to identify and connect with a huge audience before, during, and um actually before and during the making of your movie, you want to go to the seven seminar. Plus they got seven ways for you to earn extra income from your film forever, forever and ever and ever and ever. And, um, you can get a Facebook landing page kit, uh, seven video and articles of the internet marketing secrets and a brainstorming toolkit and the entire event on video. So again, Saturday, May 1st, it's at 8.30 a.m. and it goes to 5 p.m. and it's at Raleigh Studios. Everybody knows where Raleigh Studios is, 5200 Melrose Avenue in Los Angeles. And if you want a phone number, uh, let's see, we've got 805-984-0098. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a cough drop going, but it's it's barely working. Uh, now, the price for that is only $297. Uh, you get $30 off for mentioning you're a Screenplay Lab member, or you use the di- discount code Info list, I N F O L I S T, and that's a code word, but you'd have to go to their website, and that is filmmaker20seminar.com. F I L M M A K E R 20 seminar.com. So that sounds really exciting for you aspiring producers and directors or actors who want to be producers and directors. So check that out. Now, on uh, May 1st, there's also something else happening. It's the Biola Media Conference. And the Biola Media Conference is the Christian College, you know, Christian College Biola University. They're presenting the 15th annual Biola Media Conference that looks to be really inspirational And um, they're going to show just another side of Hollywood that you don't see. And some people don't say Hollywood and connect it to Christian, but God knows there's always something Christian somewhere. So it's in Hollywood, and you're going to find it there. Uh, So they have uh, keynote speakers that are going to include the former Walt Disney Studios chairman, Dick Cook, uh, Walden Media President Michael Flaherty, and TWC Films founding partner and director Phil Cook. Okay, so there's going to also be 23 industry experts. They're going to provide answers to today's media chaos because, you know, with all of this new media that's coming in with the webisodes and the iPods and all of the other stuff, people just really don't have a clue yet. It's going to take a while for you to really understand what's going on, how you get your uh, footage out there payments, all of this stuff. So again, the general sessions are going to be hosted by Dick Cook, Mark Zerati, Ralph Winner, Terry Botwick, and Michael Flaherty. There's eight workshops, and they're going to be focused on the latest technology in the media industry. They're also going to have secrets of box office success and the horror genre. They The horror genre is really pumping and wild right now. So the opening performance is going to be by Grammy-winning recording artist and producer David Pack. And David Pack is the former leading lead singer of Ambrosia. Remember that band Ambrosia back in the 80s? I think the early 80s. and the panels include former Marvel Comics creator, creative director Jim Kruger, CBS writer producer Dan Rupel, Paramount Pictures Finance VP Perry Lanero, High School Musical singer songwriter Adam Watts, and Sony Music and <coughs> oh, 
this cold. <laughs> I am so sorry, people. And yeah. Sony Music A&R director Jennifer Campbell. And it's going to be CBS Studio Center on the lot. Now, this is going to be 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And, oh, my God, it's only $150 to, to go to this event, again, at the CBS Studio Center. If you want to check that out any further, then you want to go to bio lamedia.com b-i-o-l-a-m-e-d-i-a dot com bio-l-a-media.com and again all these activities happening on May 1st uh, on May 1st again we've got ABC Disney Writing Fellowship they are accepting submissions starting May 1st uh, the ABC Disney Fellowship launched the careers of Lawrence Andreas, uh, Supernatural, Alias, Six Feet Under, Jane Espenson, Battlestar Galactica, Gilmore Girls, Buffy the Vampire Slater, Buffy the Vampire Slater, Slayer, um, Psych, The Bernie Mac Show, Frasier, and writers are judged <clears throat> on their ability to write a TV script. Okay, so each year in May, ABC Disney accepts sample scripts from unknown writers who might otherwise not get a break in Hollywood. So this is really fantastic because you don't have to be here in L.A. You don't have to be in New York. You don't have to be in Florida. You can be in the smallest town in the world. And through the power of the Internet, you can submit your script and get out here to Hollywood. And, hey, there you go. Uh, <clears throat> The I think I just came from the smallest town in the world. I'm off the plane. I'm off the tarmac. Oh, that, would, that would be our Sylvia. We have oh. been doing advertisements to wait until Sylvia was off the tarmac. She was actually in flight while we were doing our advertisements uh, coming from Minneapolis. And I'm assuming that she is off the plane. Let me finish this up real quick. <clears throat> Fellowship winners for the ABC Disney Writing Fellowship uh, are awarded $50,000 per job as an ABC television group staff writer. Uh, the fr application is free, but it must be notarized. Must be notarized. And the website for that is Disney ABC Talent Development dot com. Again, Disney D I S N E Y. ABC T A L E N T D E V E L O P M E N T Disney ABC Talent Development dot com. So check it out if you're a writer. Excellent opportunity. Well, now we're going to get to Sylvia Allen because she was uh, on the tarmac and now I guess she's off and we're ready to do our interview. Now, let me just read a little bit about. Sylvia Allen. In 2003, Sylvia Allen, our guest today, founded Sylvia's Children. And this is a nonprofit organization with the mission of feeding and clothing, educating and providing shelter for children in a small village in the African country of Uganda. And these um, orphans were left orphan due to losing either one or both parents in the AIDS pandemic. Pandemic. I think that might be the, the main goal, but I think she might help other types of, of children, not just those types of children. We'll have to check with her. Since then, Sylvia has accomplished so much, including constructing a fresh well, dedicating a library stocked with books, building four classroom blocks and a dormitory to house the students and the teachers, uh, installing computers with Internet access. And she's also brought a nurse and, a, and she's... Um, and providing a dentist to cure ailments such as uh, umbilical hernias and syphilis. And so far, she's been able to sponsor over 200 of the school's orphans, which equates to one-third of the 1,000 students that are at the school. Now, the last time we left off, she was planning to acquire seven acres of land to operate a chicken farm. We did an interview with her back in November. She was about to go to Africa. <clears throat> so we're going to follow up with her and find out if that actually happened. Now, this ch chicken farm will supply, chicken, uh, will supply the children with protein, of course, and 
bringing a source of revenue. So they're going to start uh, with a sewing trade and employing a fair trade coffee business, <coughs> which is going to allow the sale of coffee beans to be exported directly to other nations. And after this eight-year model is accomplished in 2011, she can take it to other underserved African schools to serve as a model. And this will give them tools to create sustainable economies by incorporating social capitalism into their systems by way of this uh, grassroots plan. So now, the last time we left off again, she was currently in the process of writing another book entitled Single Points of Light, Illuminating Darkest Africa. And that will feature, uh, or is featuring, I'm not sure, we're going to check with her, she's done with that, feature a collection of chapters spotlighting one person who is making a difference in Africa. Sylvia is also an accomplished author, speaker, and business owner for over 30 years, and she's won over 50 awards. She's known globally as a sales guru. And her company, which is Allen Consulting, is reorganized, I'm sorry, recognized as the cornerstone and the reinvention of many of New Jersey's downtowns. And I personally have a lot of friends in New Jersey, and they all say, I know Sylvia Allen. I've heard of Allen Consulting. I was amazed after her being on the show at the people who sent me emails. Uh, telling me that they were familiar with her. So it's such a small world. So again, Sylvia, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy life to honor us with this interview. I swear, I can't believe I caught you on the tarmac. Well, I spent a lot of time on the tarmac. My mother's uh, 96th birthday in Aiken, Minnesota was April 15th. So we're kind of all over the world. So my sister pulled together a birthday party for grandma on Saturday. So my son and I flew out and did happy birthday. My daughter went last week because, you know, when people live all over, it's hard to pull it together. And, of course, this flight was supposed to get in at 6 New Jersey time, which would be 3 Pacific time. And, no, I wasn't going to worry. No, there's a slight delay, a slight delay. And of course, my heart began to go. (laughs) (laughs) And when I finally touched down, that's when you called. I thought, well, that's just playing it just a little close in life. (laughs) Right. But you live on the edge anyway, Sylvia. My God. I spent a lot of time there. (laughs) <laughs> you you are a globe tra- global traveler, so you're used to just taking it on the cuff. Being on the tarmac is just too tame for you, isn't it? Not too bad. I'm kind of used to being on the tarmac. Well, you know, I forgot that it was November that we talked. Well, there is so much positive that's happened. Yes, we did buy the seven acres. It's already planted in corn. Uh, we will be able to start the chicken farm next month. Um, of the seven acres, two acres will be devoted to the chicken farm, but we've already had one crop of corn that can be now milled into corn flour. And then uh, I'm flying. We I did a medical trip March 12th to the 20th, uh, a doctor and three nurses where we did a 1,000 physical exams. I needed a benchmark as to what we need to do to raise money for the clinic and how urgent is it, and I will tell you it's urgent. Eight of the kids had heart murmurs. Uh, we took them for echocardiograms, and two of them, if they don't have heart surgery within the next two years, will die. That's oh. not going to happen. It's not going to happen because uh, people, I've already got somebody who says, I'll cover all the airfare, Sylvia. You just find out which hospital will do it. Okay, wow. terrific. Uh, had their teeth checked. The teeth are horrid. So now I've uh, put out the call for a thousand toothbrushes, a thousand toothpaste, and a thousand fluoride rinses. At least, you know, I can catch the kids up to age 10. Those over age 10 are going to have to have extractions. They're going to be toothless in the back, but at least they won't have these rotten teeth. We had a boy with uh, an infection in his arm that if they did, if he didn't have surgery, he would die. I will tell you that one of the people on the trip said, I'll cover the surgery, just get it done. He had the surgery last week, and he's going to be fine. Oh, um, we took 700 pounds of medical supplies. Uh, we took nebulizers. We took all sorts of things, and we were able, uh, one of the nurses 
uh, sent us an email saying, if it hadn't been for the nebulizer last week, a child would have died. But because of the nebulizer, they were able to save the child's life. So oh, wow. we're make we're make a difference. Wow, that and 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 I understand that you uh, that you support the and I, I I'm not sure if I can pronounce it correctly, but it's called the Mimbarizi <laughs> Primary School in Masaka, Uganda, Africa. <laughs> it's Mimbarizi. You, you kind of start with the M, so it's Mimbarizi, uh, Masaka, Uganda, Africa. I mean, it's a mouthful. And Masaka is really the town that's about 40 miles from them. This school happens to be in the village of Mimbarizi. Okay. And according to any of the people that have come uh, from the village, they say not only are we making a difference in these children's lives, but we're making a difference in the village life, which is very important. Of course. It's, it's going to trickle, trickle out there for sure. Now, uh, the last information I have that there were currently uh, 1,002 children in the school ages 3 to 14, of which 236 were orphans. Is that still right. the same, approximately the same statistics? That's correct, and 95, we have now 95 of those orphans sponsored. The school is uh, based on the African model, or the uh, British model, so they have baby class, top class, and then P1 to P7, and that means it's kind of the equivalent of first grade to seventh grade. Okay. And then they go on to S1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, so far, 100% of our kids have gone on. So when you look at the fact that 80% of boys do not go beyond P7 and 83% of girls do not go beyond P7, we are making a difference. Wow. Wow. Now, uh, for people who did not hear the original interview back in November, I just want to touch on two questions. Uh, A lot of people say, wow, it takes so much to take on something like that. Usually there is a motivational force. Other than the obvious of just being a humanitarian, what else was your motivation to start Sylvia's Children and why in Uganda, Africa? Well, first I was invited by a student of mine at NYU uh, who was taking a mission group over. And of course, he said, we'd like to invite you. I said, who's going? He said, five ministers. I said, five ministers and me? He said, don't worry. You'll be safe. I said, strange. I wasn't worried about me. Uh, I had a feeling I'd know what the trip was. But uh, the, the thing that happened was that the school picked me. The school, uh, on the very last day that we were there, and I was getting in a panic because I wasn't going to help this man's nonprofit, uh, this man came up to me and said, the children would like you to be their grandmother. Oh. And I, I said, okay, let's find out what children, you know. And uh, then I said, okay, give me your name, give me your cell phone, give me your email. Thank God for cell phones and email in the world. And I said, okay, I'll do that. Now, you could, I could have come back, sent $50, and written it off. But I thought, oh, my gosh, here is an opportunity to make a difference in some people's lives and make a difference before I part this planet. Let's face it, a lot of us, we do work. I have a PR and marketing business. I can do it in my sleep. You want to run an event? Fine. Blah, 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 blah. Here's what we do. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, it's a success. Okay, uh, okay time to run another event. Uh, uh, uh. But did I make a difference in anybody's life? But if I take a kid and I heal them and they can go on and I take a kid that can get an education and get out of poverty, that's a big difference. It's a big difference for sure. And that's what we should be all looking towards. Did we make a difference or is our life touching touching another life? Uh, I'm all about that poem by Ralph Waldo Emerson, which I won't go into reciting, but you got to ask yourself, did you become successful in that way. You can be successful in business, successful in your love life, successful in so many things, but or were you successful in touching a child's life? Any child, even if you don't have children of your own, did you ch- touch a child's life? So I, I think that's a, 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 a great, 
great, great thing that you're doing, and I'm sure that everybody else listening is too. Now, um, I heard that the last time that you were on the show that you, uh, Sylvia's children, had gone green. So my question is, how is that working out so far? And for those people who didn't tune in, uh, tell us a little bit about how you've gone green and what we can do to help. Now, just ask that question one more time because you cut out for a nanosecond. Oh, okay. Go so, ahead. <laughs> what I was saying is last time you were on the air, you were telling us about how Sylvia's children has gone green. And I wanted to know how that's working out for you so far. And tell us a little bit about how you're going green and what can we do to help. Okay, I got it now. I'm sorry. I was for a minute there. Okay. I know you're balancing 10, 10 suitcases, dragging a dog. Uh, God knows what you're doing all at one time. Uh, well, especially since the super shuttle guy didn't open the door to the bus. Okay. Um, just <laughs> Sorry. By going green, uh, it's more a matter of how do we make a difference in these children's lives? Let's take the cornfield and let's take the chicken farm. Okay. You, have the, you plant the corn. Okay, the corn is going to come up. You have the chickens. The chickens have chicken manure. So you got to take that chicken manure and you put it on the cornfield. Now the corn is better, and so the whole cycle is better, and we're not wasting anything. Of course, they're there, they, re they recycle everything. I mean, there is nothing. They, like, we brought over some uh, things in big uh, plastic tubs. I went to throw the tubs away. Whoa. Oh. Do not throw the <laughs> No, 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 we can use those. And I'm going, oh, my gosh. I'm so out of tune with that. Right, right, right. Now, the last time you had said that uh, we could all help by sending uh, our old printer cartridges, cell phones, and you guys would recycle them for you. And uh, I believe that uh, Ryan Dolan, uh, Jr. at uh, the Red Bank, was it Red Bank? Red Bank? Yeah. Red Bank Catholic in Red Bank, New Jersey, is uh, recycling the printer cartridge and the cell phones uh, because you guys were trying to raise $15,000 so you could buy 40 sewing machines and build a facility to house them at the uh, Embrezi Advanced School. Did you ever get – I know. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> But well, one of, the, that? <laughs> now, one of the things we found out is some of these ideas are brilliant mm -hmm. and some are not. Oh. Uh, recycling of cartridges is not. Recycling of phones is not. You mm -hmm. can't get enough volume. Mm -hmm. But that has never deterred me. It's just like uh, I, I am a Starbucks coffee. Not really Starbucks coffee. Starbucks tea drinker. I love Starbucks. My Starbucks stores love me. So two weeks ago, I'm chatting with one of the baristas, and she says, by the way, because I'm thinking of doing a clothing drive, there's a website called clothingdrive.net, and what they'll do is pay you 13 cents a pound for clothing, and then they send it off to needy countries. So she says, Sylvia, I got, you know, four bags of clothes, and her manager says, wait a minute, wait a minute, what are you doing, collecting clothes? I said, what I'm trying to do, Danielle, is get Starbucks to collect clothes. Oh, she said, get me the information. My district manager is meeting me tomorrow. We need another fundraiser. Okay, I got everything to her. Punchline is 11 Starbucks in this one lady's area. And it's all New Jersey are doing a clothing drive May 1 to June 15th. Wow. If we get... If we just get 10,000 pounds per store, we'll make 14.3. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And is and this information on the particular Starbucks? Is this on your website so we know which Starbucks to go to? Will be. It will be. This just happened, you know, last week. Oh, okay. And so we're racing around like maniacs doing collection bins and making up posters and making up flyers and handouts. And, of course, and I immediately sent a note to some teachers at the local school. Mm -hmm. Bingo. It looks like all of the Homedale schools, which have 
6,000 students are going to be doing a clothing drive. Wow. Wow. Well, hey, now I don't feel so bad about Starbucks charging $22 for a coffee. Now now it's like, okay, now I'm pro Starbucks. I was against Starbucks for costing that much, but now they have a, a new friend. <laughs> Have a new well. What I want to do is take this and let's say this model works, which it will. Then I take it as a prototype and I go to every regional manager. Yeah. And I here's an opportunity for you to roll it out. Here's an opportunity for Starbucks to promote it nationally. And here's an opportunity for them to do something that, along the line of corporate social responsibility in Africa, where they have so much else going on. Mm. And see, that's why. I'm that's how I balance the Sylvie's children in the PR hat. Exactly. Yeah, you're putting your PR business to work, all of your skills. My God, that's a great idea. When are you going to start working on that idea? Uh, well, we, we launched this. I'm going to have to race like a maniac this week to get all those the drop-off things put in because yeah. it launches May 1. But hmm. then I'll, I'll see. Well, we can do it, though. Uh, we pulled off an exhibit at Monmouth University in two weeks. Oh, my God. Yeah, I can't wait to share that with you because oh. that's going to be available to colleges and universities. Well, tell us uh, about it. Tell us now. Well, uh, I had a, Monmouth University happens to be a client, and I'd approached them about, they have this Pollock Auditorium. They have 122-foot display space. And I said, would you like to have an exhibit of Sylvie's children, not only tactile, but visual? Because I've got drums and rugs, and I've got shakers and bark plugs. I mean, I've just got tons of stuff. And they said, yeah, we'd like to do that. Now, so we met with them <laughs> middle of February. They said, uh, we'd like it up March 1. No problem. No problem. We got it up March 1. We did an opening reception March 5th. And then Friday, April 30th, we're doing a closing reception. Well, I let them handle the opening. I'm handling the closing. I have... I have Ugandan food. I have a guy coming to do drum circles. I'm in the press release. I'm saying, you know, BYOD, bring your own drum, and we'll do a, a close to it. And then right after that, it goes on to the five campuses of Brookdale Community College. And then after that, it goes to Georgian Court College. And then I'm meeting with somebody from Rutgers to see if I could get on the Rutgers main campus. So it's an opportunity. And then we sell product, too, you know, because I've got necklaces and earrings and uh, beads of life and bracelets and drums and squares, quilt squares made by the children and woven purses and baskets and the woven nativity sets made out of the banana leaves. I'm going to go on and on and on. So we're able to sell the product, which then has value back to the school as well. <laughs> Let me ask you, how, with all these things being sold and, and all of this money coming in, how do you keep track of all the money that comes in so that you're making sure that you get all of it? I mean, yes, you're going to rely on them being, you know, honest and stuff, and, and most of them are, but, you know, money can get lost or maybe something can happen. But how do you, how do you keep track of that and collect all of the money to get it to the, to the organization? I have an inventory. Okay. They sign off, they sign off on an inventory. Okay. All right. So you. So what happens with these types of things? Just on a uh, an organizational level, if people wanted to know how fun these fundraisers work, uh, it, you sell things. You got things that happen. So people collect the money. They give it to you. And then, when do you running around doing all of these things? When do you have time to to go through the inventory, or do you have a designated person that does that? Do you have a crew of people or a staff that does that for you? You're talking to the crew. Ah, I knew it. See, I was wondering about that. I knew it was just you, Sylvia. My yeah, God, but then me. again, you can be on a tarmac, you can be dragging luggage, have a phone conversation, so why can't you do inventory and promote at the same time? My God. How do you it's in, an, it's in an Excel sheet anyway, you know? Yeah. And so then as you sell stuff, you cross it off. So and then you don't do it. These are all one of the things. 
don't tell me you're the sole person there collecting the money, also doing the promoting. I mean, how do you get out there and tell people about uh, who want to talk to you about the organization? Uh, you don't you don't physically sell the stuff yourself. You have someone there doing that for you, though, right? Yeah, I do. At the moment, the university thing, I have one of their staff selling it because I can't be there every day. Yeah. But we just we did a speech at a church the other day and sold over $900 worth of stuff. I had, I went and picked it up and brought it. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, I'm, I'm always available to do speeches, but I'm choosy about where and when. Uh, I'm finding schools, quite amenable. And then it helps Wednesday night, I'm getting a, what is called the Governor's Award, uh, Governor's Jefferson Award, uh, as an, as an ambassador, an outstanding ambassador. They told me they had 489 applicants and I'm getting this award as a volunteer who is representing the Garden State internationally in a positive light. Congratulations, and it couldn't go to a more deserving person. Wow, where's the ceremony going to take place? Is it private or public? No, it'll, it's not. It's the weird thing is I'm going to tell them I want to run it next year. It's at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, and I had people say, oh, Sylvia, I'll buy a ticket. I said, you can't. Each one of us that has won an award in these different categories gets to bring four people. What a waste of time and energy because if, let's say, I could have sold 50 tickets, even at 60 bucks each, you know, that's still $3,000 that the state could have considering how many billions were in the hole. Oh, that's so I'm going to say thank you for my award and let me run this event next year. Amen. <laughs> There you go. Sylvia's taking over. She's going to bring some money in Jersey, but we're going to secretly steal you in the middle of the night and bring your butt to California so that you can get our state funded. We need you over here. <laughs> we're, the ones going, we're the ones going bankrupt over here. Jersey is full of money. Come on over to California, Sylvia. I know it's sad. It is sad. It is now. Um, now, so let me ask you: what What exactly are you going back to Africa anytime soon, or how often are you going there now? Oh, I'm going to go May 15th. We just got back March 20th. I'm going to go May 15th because I want to. Uh, I have 13 people going on the June trip. Uh huh. I want I want to lay that trip out so efficiently that whatever we're doing is on schedule, on track. One of the things the school always wants to do is entertain us and feed us, and I want to work. And so I'm telling them Monday through Thursday, we're working all day. Friday we can have, you know, we have the orphan's birthday party and we serve the kids and everything. But I want to lay it out where, okay, four people are hauling the cornfield Monday morning. Uh, all of us are hauling water from 3 to 4 uh, Monday through Thursday. Thursday. I want it where five people are helping my daughter repair all the uniforms. Mm -hmm. We have to take inventory of the 235 orphans. So that means updating their records, taking a picture. I mean, there's lots of work to be done. And sometimes uh, it's a little more random. Mm -hmm. But since I've got so much that has to be done, I don't want random. No. It's, no. it's got to be organized. And also, I want to sit with him and go over in detail how I want him to put a budget together right. so I have a better sense of where we're going. And also sit with him and figure out, okay, can we generate revenue from the chicken farm? Can we generate cornfield? Uh, he wants us to uh, get donations of band equipment so that they can have a band at the school. Oh, yes. Yeah, and then they will play at weddings and they'll play at birthday parties and everything. Oh, that's fantastic. So, I love that. Yeah, so if you want to make an announcement, you know, calling all instruments, we need instruments. Okay, that's what I was going to say. What do we need, Sylvia, besides money? We need instruments. Any type of instrument, correct? Absolutely. Now, Absolutely. Where, now, if we have an instrument and we're not in New Jersey, how do we, we, do we just package them up and send it to you? And where do we get your address? It's on the website. Tell us all about it. Okay. Uh, hold on. Uh, you go to silvischildren.org, uh, and then I will give you our address. Sorry, I was taking the wrong guy's suitcase. <laughs> 
Um, 89 Middletown Road in Holmdel, H-O-L-M-D-E-L, New Jersey. 07733. Um, and then they can always call me on the phone. 732-946-2711. They can also call me on the cell. 732, I may be on the tarmac, 241-1144. Oh, that's fantastic. And so basically, if you have any instruments you want to donate, wrap them up. Are you just taking instruments like the physical instruments? Or what about if, say, for example, it's a guitar, but then there's an amp that goes with it? Do you take that's that or fine. just the physical instruments? So any musical instruments plus their attachments you will accept. Yeah, we want. I'll tell you what we're looking for. We're looking for horns, uh, any kind of horns, trumpets, trombones, tubas. Um, we are looking for flutes. Um, if you take an invitation to high school, if you want in a high school band. Yeah. And then with the envisioning what, what a high school band, those are the things we need. Excellent. Excellent. But you'll take any instruments at all. But those right. are mainly the ones. Okay. Because my husband, oh. Albert, oh, my God, you know, he's a musician. And he has all kinds of stuff in his, uh, in his uh, recording studio. He's got like a – and I've been trying to get him to get rid of them because he'll never use them. He's got like this uh, – he, uh, accordion, oh, which is sign up. accordion, he's got, uh, what are those things you blow into, harmonicas, he's never <laughs> even used them, he goes through these phases where he buys stuff and then he never uses them, and they're just taking up space, so this is a perfect opportunity for me to say, oh, guess what, we're giving them to Sylvia, so go to Sylvia's website, sylviaschildren.org, Dot org, right? Correct. And uh, all the information is right. in there. How to, uh, how you would be okay. able to. Uh, hello. I'm here. Oh, you there? Okay. Uh, Sylvia'sChildren.org, and you can find out all the information on how to donate any instruments. Also, anytime you want to donate money. There, I assume that you can donate at any time uh, by also going to the website. And uh, what else do you are you in need of? Uh, not, not medical supplies. I'm getting a baby. Um, we've got tons of those. Get my wallet out of my bed. Um, so you take care of whatever you're being interrupted for. Let me tell the, the audience a little bit about some facts about Africa while you take care of that. Okay, people, let me just tell you some facts about Africa. Africa is the world's second largest continent, as you know. Africa is home to 10% of the world's population. Sub-Saharan Africa has 15 million children under 18 who are AIDS- Orphans, AIDS, and AIDS orphans. Uganda, <clears throat> Uganda has 1.5 million orphans. Uganda, 95% of the population does not have electricity. In Uganda, more than half of the population lives on less than $2 a day. In Uganda, 95% of the population does not have water. Yeah, imagine not being able to take a bath or a shower every day, people. Uh, Uganda, only 20% of the male children go past the seventh grade. And in Uganda, only 17% of the female children go past seventh grade. So this is what Sylvia is doing. Sylvia is making these statistics to be less of a burden on one school in Uganda. And this is what she's doing. This is why she has the instruments she needs to collect. This is why she needs you to send money. This is what she's doing to make a difference. And you too can make a difference. And we really, 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 really beg you to do this because it is making a difference in a child's life. And Sylvia is doing it. She's making it happen. And she doesn't 
uh, diddle daddle around and you don't have to go through this process. You know how when you have the larger organizations, which God bless them, you know, United, United Way, Red Cross, you send your money and you think, well, where is it going? I mean, I don't know about you people, but I think, yeah, you know, I give to charities all the time. And I personally, for me, try to pick ones that are the smaller ones because I know with the smaller ones that the money is going to get put to use faster. That's just in my mind how it works. I don't really know if that's true or not, but in my mind, that's how it works. And uh, Sylvia's Children is an organization where you know Sylvia is on the ball. She's out there working, making it happen. I mean, you got to admire a woman who's on the tarmac and has, we started this interview with her getting off the tarmac. Actually, we started it with when she was on the tarmac, she has gone through a whole interview and has let none of it destroy her mind and her thoughts on talking about Sylvia's children. And we never would have known that she was carrying luggage, getting into a bus. God knows where she is now. And that's how she handles her business. So I'm um, fighting with Avastar because I'm supposed to be on automatic sign out and they're telling me my credit card isn't going through and I'm slapping my arms at them and moving my <laughs> We're in the car and everything's cool. I, I think one of the things I always want people to know, though, because here, here are some of the things I get. Well, you know, Sylvia, I'm only one person. Yeah. And I say, well, unless I, you know, look like I'm two people, I'm only one. Yeah. And part of being one person, even though you're one voice, you can influence lots of people. Yeah. And you can say, okay, you don't have to. You don't have to get out and lead the brigade. But will you be part of my army? Right. And I'm getting really good at when somebody says I've got this brilliant idea, and I look at them and smile sweetly, and they're getting pretty smart because they're going, you know, it sounds to me like you want me to run with it. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> so if and then I can be like there's a, there used to be a guy in the circus. I just love the circus, but he'd have 25 plates on on poles and he'd be spinning them. And he'd race. He'd see, oh my gosh, one of them's now falling down at the other, and he'd race down at the other end and he'd keep the plate spinning. And that's kind of what I feel like I do because I've got some wonderful people. Both my kids are involved in it. They love to work at it. They can. They do what they can do. I have people who say, like a lady who used to work at Starbucks. She said. I want to do this clothing drive. Terrific. I will back you up. You've gotten the people to say yes. Now let me do the collateral. Let me do the PR. Let me do the posters. Let me now take your idea and run with it. That's an excellent uh, point that you made because if anybody listening to the show has an idea and says, hey, what if she could do this, just tell Sylvia about it because – uh, don't worry about you having to do all of the intricate details and worry about the administration process and how you could completely take it through uh, from beginning to end. Just tell Sylvia your idea and she can handle it. She has an award-winning PR agency with over three decades of experience in strategies uh, that basically generate positive publicity so she can propel that idea to the next level so you don't have to worry about it at all. Just give Sylvia your idea. She loves ideas for sure, right Sylvia? Yeah, and it and if you want to, like for example, you don't have to raise big money. I've got these kids at Colts Neck High School who are raising money by selling popcorn. There's a, a company that does fundraising popcorn. Uh, whatever price we sell it for, we get 50% of the proceeds. Well, they've only raised about $600. Mm -hmm. I say only. I don't mean that. They've raised $600. That means they sold $600 worth of popcorn. We get $300. Terrific. $300 I didn't have to raise. That's right. That's right. And uh, it all adds up. Yeah, yeah, and six hundred dollars doesn't seem like a lot here to some people, but how much is it in Uganda? We don't even know. What is what is six hundred dollars in Ugandan dollars? Well, think about okay, and six hundred dollars in Ugandan money is oh my gosh, six hundred plus three six so six hundred thousand million uh, one one point two billion shillings. Okay, now, which that, which would equate back into our dollars as what? Six hundred dollars. 
But see, the thing is, $600 here has a much greater impact. It has the impact of maybe 6000 or even 60000 in value because everything is so much cheaper. Right, right, exactly. And all the money goes there. Uh, we don't take any... Uh, any percentage for administrative, according to the IRS ruling for a 501c3, you can take 15%. I can't do that. No. I, I, am, I am so focused on getting this school self-reliant and entrepreneurial, and every dime that comes in goes over there. Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, it, do you believe that you now can rest and relax because this is the end of the show and you've made it through like a pro that you are, Sylvia Allen? It is the end of Question Reality. Again, Sylvia Allen, sylviaschildren.org. Visit the website. Sylvia, thank you so much for coming on the show. I love you to death. You are an amazing, amazing, phenomenal gift to this earth and to the universe i would like to send you out into the universe and gather some people from other planets if i could because i tell you you'd make it happen please please your give heart. you it's for real sincerely uh, everybody please help sylvia raise money for these children please sylvia's uh, children.org sylvia you come back anytime you want my darling and you tell us what's going on we want to hear from you yearly Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening to Question Reality. We'll see you next week. Bye, Sylvia. Bye. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on L.A. Talk Radio. 